Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Memorial Championship presented by Discraft. We're here at the Shelly Sharp Disc Golf Course located at Vista Del Camino Park. We've got MP40 action rounds three and four. This is all bonus stuff. I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy, and we're here at the Vista course playing the XL layout for the Memorial Championship. And hole number one is the second shortest hole on the course. Also, only one of two holes that's sub 300 feet. Definitely doesn't play as one of the easiest, though. We've got a triple Mando off the tee and OB on the high right side. This is Steve Brinster. He's your leader after two rounds at the halfway point. He's going to take this lead over to the Vista course. They played two rounds at Fountain Hills, and now we're at Vista. And after successfully getting through the triple Mando, you see that he rolled backward. Not a great start. This is Shasta Chris. I believe this is the... Fifth or sixth year that we've seen him playing in the Masters division. He'll dabble in open from time to time as well. You hear that we have a little bit of wind here on a Saturday morning. And he's piped that one right up the middle. Third to T, someone we talk about quite a bit. He's often sat in on some coverage, helped me out in terms of commentary. He also has done some drone work for me. Of course, I'm talking about one Pete Uliberry. And rounding out our card, Dutch Napier, a.k.a. Batman. In fact, it feels even kind of weird just to call him Dutch. So used to calling him Batman all these years. Dutch comes in with a 1,005 rating, which is the fourth highest out of our competitors this weekend in the Masters division. Right here, Steve Brinster, he comes in with the highest rating of all competitors in Masters. And that is his 1021 rating. Nice, easy approach there for Pete. A little bit deep. Shasta entered the event with a 998 rating. He's been averaging 1033 over at the Fountain Course. And that's going to be short on his birdie attempt here on one. Yeah, he had the hottest round, tied for the hottest round to start the tournament. That was a nine under at Fountain, rated 1039. Taking nothing for granted here. And Brinster, possibly distracted in the background there. You see some of the competitors that are over there on hole number three. I'm not going to say that was for sure it, but definitely wide on the attempt, and that's going to have to be a complete reset for him. Looks like about the same distance coming back. So that's going to be a tough bogey to get started here on hole number one, immediately erasing the one-stroke lead he had over Shasta. Batman in for birdie. Just the second year that we've seen Batman playing in the Masters division. I think we can say the same of Steve Brinster. So two of the younger guys 
out here in the Masters field. We head over to hole two, 369 feet. Pretty straightforward. You're going to find that holes two and three and maybe even four all play pretty similar. Usually you're going to see a low line drive off to the right side. You're going to want to play the skip and have it kind of just skip toward the basket. See the two trees on the right side of the basket? You want to come in just underneath those. You do not want to turn it over like that. And out of the park. Foul ball for Dutch. That's going to be out of bounds. And this is really the play you're looking for. Just hoping to avoid the trees. He could have used a little more distance on it. But that's essentially the play you're looking for. Hang it out to the right side. And then just let a couple of skips do the work to bring you back to the pin. Let's see if that has enough hookup at the end. And it does. Oh, and that's perfect. That's going to be a par job for Pete. Besides playing more than 400 tournaments, winning more than 100 of them, Steve Brinster's always been known for incredible distance. Not exactly a tall, lanky guy and has a very unique hop in his run-up. And it has never stopped him from being one of the longest throwers out there in the game. Shast has a look from Circle's Edge, we'll say. <laughs> Even the high kick doesn't bring it in. Yeah, essentially, whatever your shot, successful shot, you're throwing on the T of two, you'd pretty much love to duplicate it on the T of three and then even again on the T of four. If you've been watching Steve for a long time like I have, you know that he's changed up his putting stance and routine just a little bit. Still a straddle, but he's very consciously kept that left hand off of the disc in a similar yet completely different way. I think we've seen that by both Waisaki and Macbeth in the last year or two as well, not touching their left hand to the disc while they're resting and lining up for their putt. What's to be made of that? Eh, I don't know. I guess those guys are good. So a couple of pars and then ultimately the park job here by Pete. Sounds like a Yuli thing to do. Get a plug in there for the nuke. <laughs> Happy to do so. Speaking of plugging, I've got my disc in a box. If you're looking to ship a disc anywhere, I've got a solution for you. The recyclable, reusable boxes that I offer. I sell them in 100 count cartons. And everybody loves when they get their valuable disc or even just a thrower. You love to get it protected. And my disc in a box is your solution. And worth leaving that in as Pete was waiting for a distraction. And as he pulls that one to the right, but he was saying he didn't want to yell for, possibly distract someone else. You guys have seen plenty of tournaments out here. The Memorial, along with the Phoenix Ladies Open, along with the Shelly Sharp that I cover. This is a very, very busy park, and sometimes standing down and waiting for distractions is just a fact of playing out on this course.
Beautiful shot by Brinster. A little bit short, but that'll definitely put him on the putting green. See that white whisker on the bottom right of your screen there. The players do have the option, and I know I say this every event, but the players do have the option to tee. If there's a whisker provided on the right or left of the tee, they can actually tee from off the sides of the pads over to where those whiskers are located. And that's because some of these tee pads are really old and worn in, and they can be slick, even sometimes during what seem like great conditions. So if you see anyone tee from somewhere other than the tee box, that's why. And yes, I'll probably repeat that every single round because it's always the first question in the comment section. <laughs> I guess me repeating it doesn't help because I do it every event. So Shasta off the mark. A little frustration here by Brinster, and you can understand he's now missed putts on one, two, and three. And starting out pretty stale. Meanwhile, Batman gets up and makes quick work of it. You also find that about half the baskets on this course have an extended pole that gets played. Try to add another element of challenge out here on the course. There's not a lot of elevation, clearly not a ton of trees. Therefore, a number of our baskets are elevated. Some more subtle than others. Nobody lighting things up in the first three holes as we head over to hole number four. 381, similar distance to what we've seen on the previous two. This one does bring this tree on the right side that you're seeing. That comes into play a lot more than any other trees on the previous few holes. We also will have OB as this kind of plays as a a long peninsula hole, in a sense, that you can find OB way off to the left, deep, and too far to the right. And that's the tree I speak of. You really need to decide if you're trying to go wide to the right of it if you've got a ton of power that can get you all the way around it or if you want to sneak just inside just missing it to the left steve's going out does it have it it does plenty of distance and wide enough that's about as perfect as it gets while still being nervous after the release And Batman was looking for that to swing back a little harder at the end. Pete's got a jumper, but the wind gets under it. Pete has the lowest rating in the group at 989. What is it? Average 1019 golf over the first two rounds. 1039 opening round, along with a 1009 second round over at Fountain Hills. And he just squeaks that one in. Of course, Pete, very active in the disc golf community in Arizona. Brothers with Paul, if you have not yet made that connection. So Brinster erasing the bogey he picked up on one. That's going to put him back to even for the round. Even through four is not what many would consider a, a very impressive start out here, especially with someone of Brinster's power. He's expecting to get two, three, maybe even all four out of the first four.
We shortened things by about 40 feet as we head to hole five. However, you have to stay to the left of the tree that's on the right side there. Saw a little white marking on that tree. You must go left of that tree trunk. That is considered a mandatory. If you miss it to the right, you go to a drop zone and immediately are assessed a penalty stroke. See a little slip there by Brinster. There's also a mando on this left side tree that you have to go to the right of. So you essentially have to throw this straight. Pro move there. Pete picking up the wind read with his non-throwing hand. He likes it. It's going to have a little bit of a finish to it, but overall he likes it. You, you can get a little bit protected if you go if you go deep of this pin it, those trees directly behind the basket especially to the elevated basket here can somewhat guard your putt oh no and that's flipped up and over as we hear the wind picking up even harder so he's going to go to the drop zone with a penalty so i guess that's my question leave it in the comments I'm, uh, I'm working on my website still, shop.thediscgolfguy.com. We're going to allow you guys to win stuff from there eventually. But put it in the comments. What's your favorite way to get a win read other than just physically looking ahead, so to speak? But what's your favorite thing to do to get a win read? Is that grass? Is that holding up a towel? Is that pulling the patented Gannon Burr move of, of using your rosin bag and then seeing which way the... Uh, the rosin flies. Tell me what's your favorite way to get your own win read. Put that in the comments. That'll make you eligible to win. Probably some double G jerky, I'm thinking. Steve kind of forced to lay up. You can see, although pin high, a little bit of the trees can come into play and didn't fully extend. You put him 10 feet left of where he is, and that putt can be almost impossible due to the trees. So the pro tip is to do what Dutch did, is come up short of this pin if you can. As I said, put your favorite win read into the comments, but also like, share, subscribe, do all the YouTube things. I hate to beg you, but that's what we have to do. Also, we're going to beef up what we're doing for our Patreon supporters in 2023. So you can find that on patreon.com slash the disc golf guy. We're here on hole six. This is the longest hole that they've seen thus far. It's a par four. And as we go up and over, we're going to ultimately see that you have OB is going to be on the left side of the fairway, also OB on the right side of the fairway. This is coming to a shorter basket. This is about where you want to land, and then we still are going to need about 3 to 325 past that. But that gives you some idea of the landing zone where you're looking to get off of your first shot. Not the drive that Brinster... Well, he, the drive is fine. However, he he would have loved to miss that tree.
And you see a little bit of nerves there from and or frustration. That was like a nervous, awkward laugh out of Shasta. And that just is a low burner that might be quite punishing there for Pete as it starts rolling back toward him. He's got a long way to the pin yet. At a certain point with where you're positioned on this hole off the tee, and you may have heard that earlier, is you, you're just playing for a four. Uh, uh, this can be a bonus three. If you're not in position, it's very easy to find yourself out of bounds left or right on the second shot. So you have to be fully committed and in a good position if you're going to try and attack this for a birdie three. You see that OB that is just lining all the way down on that right side. Pete's third. That's going to be a little light. And that's just a misfire there by Dutch. Nice standstill by Brinster. And if there's ever been a patented or signature move, that medium distance, short to medium range distance, and a standstill shot by Brinster. That's something that's been really a signature of his for decades now. In fact, sometimes you'll see a hole upwards of 225, 250, and he's just standing on the tee as opposed to giving it a run up. Very comfortable trying to remove some of the variables. So here's Pete's third. Uh, correction, that's his fourth. And that's going to be a good bogey save. Interestingly enough, in this division, this plate is the single most difficult hole on the course during round three. It averaged a full stroke over par and then some. It averaged 1.14 and was easily the most difficult hole on the course during this round. And spoiler, I mean, no birdies on this hole. They're going to have a very lengthy walk over to the T of seven, which will play as one of the easiest holes on the course. Putting it out here straight out. Hoping to get as close to maybe this pathway as possible. That's a huge drive. We've seen players get to it or just beyond it. And then that's going to be a gentle chip shot around the corner. There's a couple mandos here, essentially forcing you to go the way I just described but this often plays as one of the easiest holes on the course. Today, it's going to play as the fourth easiest hole. And that's exactly what you want to do. It's pushing hard for Brinster. And you're hearing the wind pick up as that also finishes left. Play right 
And so now a few years ago, they've added a Mando, so somebody couldn't go straight at the pin. Not that you'd probably want to in these wins, but that is a near perfect shot. But you see the mandatory up there. That means you have to go to the right of that tree, which for most players, most of the time is going to be the shot you'd be looking for. But they forced that so players couldn't throw up the left side and go over the road. Shasta, for instance, would love to go straight at the basket, but that's not an option here. That's why he's going to have to cut through this tree line on the right side. Again, sets up well for a righty backhander anyway because he's going to throw it low, get one, two, three, four, five, six, skips in a roll, and he'll have a look. Good approach there from Brinster. As I said, this is playing as the fourth easiest. It typically plays as the single easiest, but Pete cashing it in. Shasta, about the same distance. That's at least circle's edge. And in a windy day, <laughs> you'd be okay with not getting that extra 10 feet of rolling. Normally, you wouldn't be too stressed about it, but to an elevated basket with a bunch of wind, <laughs> you can understand Shasta's frustration. And similar to one, an air ball here from Brinster. He's definitely got to be frustrated with that after setting himself up so well for the look on this. And now he's coming back with essentially the same distance, elevated pin, opposite wind direction. So whatever he learned on the previous putt, he's going to have to now apply the opposite theory here. Still going to go through his full routine. You don't want to take anything for granted. Uh, that's a good comeback putt, but walking away with a par here after that drive he had is going to be frustrating. So Pete, really the only one able to take advantage of hole seven. Big shout out to Jeff Corns and the crew over at Resistance Disc for the support. Again, this is all bonus coverage as we head to one of my favorite holes on the course, hole eight, 360 feet. Downhill, of course, water out of bounds. You can go... If you go too deep, you go past that sidewalk on or over that sidewalk, also out of bounds. Looks like Spicy Boy, our cameraman extraordinaire, setting up directly behind the basket. That's actually my favorite place to set up on this hall. I'm just dying for that ace as I'm hanging out at the catch cam position to be able to track it in. Maybe we'll see one today. Nice shot by Batman. You see everyone hovering around even, one under, one over. Not too much happening here in the first seven holes. That's going to be a good look there for Brinster.
And Shasta's hopefully staying up, and it does. So we got four guys inbounds. We'll see who can take advantage. And I said it earlier, I've said it a couple times, uh, we had a crew trying to get as much MPO and FPO footage as we could that week, getting multiple cards a day. We were super glad to be able to get these last two rounds as Pete, right side corner pocket, drops it in. We got the last two rounds of our MP40 coverage out here at the Vista course. So this and round four, we do not have rounds one or two from this division. So if you're hunting around, you will not find it. This was something we were able to just kind of put in our back pocket, sit on for a few months, and uh, hope that you guys enjoy a little extra content during the slower part of the release season. And... Dutch doesn't convert. All this content, not only some of the sponsors that stepped up for the week, but the bonus content especially is what's made available and possible only because of my Patreon supporters and people that head over to the website and also buy some stuff. So I very much appreciate it. Meanwhile, Brinster not appreciating his putting stroke here. Some significant struggles in these first eight holes. And maybe even more frustrating for everyone as you're about to head to the second most difficult hole on the course. Hole number nine all day long is a is a tweener of almost being a par four and it's almost always the most difficult birdie get on the entire course. So often you walk away from there thinking, man, par is great. And it's easy to rack up <laughs> big numbers, and you can probably see why. OB, here is the water on the left-hand side. There's also a sidewalk on the right side, which is out of bounds. Players will usually try and bite off about two-thirds or maybe three-quarters of this hole if they can. And then oftentimes it's just a pitch up to the pin and hoping to walk away with your par three. Unless you've got big distance, most people are content with a three here. Pete finds himself in the fairway, no problem. Dutch trying to play it safe. Brinster stepping up. I know I told you of his power earlier. And he's going to take the risky route. Pushing it out over the water, having it flex. And then ultimately it fights back, and he's going to have a birdie look. What a drive by Brinster. And Shasta also just trying to find it hitting the ground so that he can hopefully be able to get up and down, walk away with a par here. This is kind of what most people are going to be left with. If you're just pumping something out there a little over 300 feet from here, you have an up and down. However, you do have water just beyond the basket. <laughs> There's not a lot of obstacles on the course. And so when you do hit something like one of the rogue pine cones and it stops you, that can get frustrating. And I think Pete's going to flirt with the water's edge, but he's going to stay dry and he'll have a look to save his par. Dutch is up and ready to go right away. Shasta trying to save par. And for a moment... Is holding his breath, knowing that could trickle into the water, but he's going to stay safe from there. But looking at a bogey at best. Oh, 
Oh, and not much going on for Dutch here. It looks like that's going to be a bogey. He's going to probably bring himself back to even par through the front nine. As I said, it doesn't feel like anyone's really tearing it up here. Shasta's one over through the front. At this point, this is to save bogey. And he'll do just that, but that means he's going to be two over for the front. Pete will give himself a mark. Always good to know that even when you're not out of bounds, you can bring yourself up to one meter away from the OB line. So whether you're two inches from the out of bounds or you're 36 inches from out of bounds, you can take up to a full meter. What's a meter? 30, 39 inches and, and some? I don't know. I'm sure all you internationals think we're stupid anyway. Which isn't entirely wrong. Brinster with the bonus birdie. I've got to assume he's maybe the only competitor in the field to get that one. So a huge bonus birdie. We'll see if that can get Brinster jump-started. He's just one down through the front nine. Shasta's two over. Pete trying to make a little bit of a charge. And we're also seeing KJ Naibo up there doing work. He's on the chase card. He is lighting it up. Guys, we're going to head into the back nine of round three at the Memorial. We'll see you there. 